We have this opportunity to be with all of you here in this place that is so close to our hearts and to all of our hearts. Whoever is watching this, whoever is with us, this is Reb Shlomo's home in Eretz Yisrael, the Shul and the Moshav. And all our friends and family are here. And we Bafka wanted, we Bafka wanted to come here on the 26th yard site to come here and uh, just be ourselves. Just for brain, just Lizrom. Yes. Lizrom. So. We hope you just sing with us the whole night and dive with us the whole night. And what would you like to sing? Yeah. Um. <laughs> Let's do it. Uh... There's one nigun that I heard on the tape. One of those tapes that you had stacked up in the room back in Los Angeles. And uh, such a simple niggin, but mama's Oh, 
highest nigunim in the world. Everyone has their first stacks of tapes where you're discovering things for the first time. And uh, I definitely wanted to sing some of those. Those first time, going back to those first times discovering things. So, um, thing, uh, you just recorded it so beautifully. It's the nigun that uh, Yehuda and I found, Yehuda Salman and I found <clears throat> in July 1970. We didn't find it in July 76. <laughs> From July 76, right after uh, Entebbe, Reb Shlomo wrote this nigun that has changed the world, in my opinion. But you might hear that, that statement a lot in Tehillim. Shem Yeshuvah no 
ובאו ציון מדינה, פדוי השם ישוב נובה, ציון מדינה, פדוי השם ישוב ובאו ציון מדינה, פדוי השם ישוב נובה, ציון מדינה. Specifically, I think that it opened up just a world of, of regesh for me to feel when I don't know, everybody's different, there's certain tenuous in this specific niggin that just like, you know, especially because of the, 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 the composing tape, that was one of the tapes that I remember listening to like when I was in 10th grade or like 11th grade, something like that. And, uh-huh. and, and, he said that line that I like that, that I, I I don't want to be like repetitive, but like that line, it just it changed my life. That line. Yeah. Say it. Say it again. He said, "You hear, there's a lot of commotion in the room. There's a lot of talking and this and that." And he said something to the effect of, "You know, the windows are open. People are walking around. Is that?" He says, "Chavit, if you're gonna sit, sit. If you're gonna stand, stand. But please be quiet. My mom is dragging this out of my heart." And when he said that, oh, so that's what, that's what a niggin is. That's what a niggin is. And, and, and it just made such a, like, I, I can never stop listening to that niggin. I can't, I can't, it's, it's a... Yeah, it also ruins you, because you can't listen to, like, 90% rain. Yeah, that, that's the, I always, like what, like, what else is being dragged out of the heart? You know, that, that, that's... Because if it's not dragged out of the heart, it's good, it may be good music. Yeah. 
Nothing in specific. Let's sing another one. Let's sing one from here, with one that he wrote on the Moshev. Maybe we'll do it in a major. I love this nigga. And he wrote this here. I'm not sure which Cholamoid it was, but uh, we'll sing a few from here.
What was the first Tyra from Rosh Hashanah you remember learning? Mm. Meaning, first tire, yeah. I, I'm assuming that you knew that there were Nibbunim before yeah, any, I did. anything. I did, I did. So we all grew up with songs that was Shlomo Karlbach's music. But first what? Tire. The first Tyra I ever heard was him explain was Parshas Vayera, and he was talking about, he's talking about the Akedah. But before he got to the Akedah, he was building the whole thing up, and it was like a, a moment where, where also like a nigun that you hear as a tznua and it stays with you. So there was this title that I never forget it. When Avram Avinu was, greets the angels, he says to them, Yukachna me'at ma'im, v'rachatzu lagleichem, like he wants to give them water, he says a little bit of water. But then when it comes to the, to the meat, b'shefa, right? Mm-hmm. Runs and gives them so much meat. So he's wondering, like, why, why is Avram Avinu so stingy when it comes to water and dafka with meat? It's not. So he said over there, like, <laughs> something that's so practical. He says, you can, the truth is that Yidla needs just one drop of water to live on. And Maim El you All you really need is one vort to keep in your pocket your whole life, that's really all you need to make it in this world. And I feel like that with like every Torah he says. I feel like that with almost every nigger. It's just like, you kachna me'at ma'im. Yeah, the basa, you could keep on going to the finest restaurants to find all different types of flesh, but all you, need, all you really need is you kachna me'at ma'im, a little bit of water. I never heard anyone talk to talk Torah like that before in my life. So let's sing like a... It's perhaps too. And it's precious Vayera, Ashrecha, Ashreinu. Yeah, those tires and Vayera, wow. So let's, uh, let's sing a nigga that's like a Yukach Name At Maim nigga, like one. I think it's a nigga you love too. And we'll uh, share a little bit about the history of this nigga. <laughs> Things are usually like this. But when he wrote it, it was like this. That note, that note is a dagger. So sing with us, Heaven.
this nigun went to the words B'Shem Hashem, Reb Shlomo wrote this to different words. And he wrote it in memory of the six million. David HaMelech says in Tehillim Kuf Yutet, Zaydim Heilitsuni Ad Me'ayed. Just think about those pictures of Germans, Yimach Shemam, cutting the payas and beards of Yidden standing around them, laughing at them. I just saw a picture like that yesterday. And nothing can console us until Mashiach comes with those pictures. It says, Dabr HaMelech says, Zaydim Heilitsuni Ad Me'ayed. These Zaydim, how do you say Zaydim? These, uh... Zaydim. Three rats. Heilitsuni, they made fun of me. But I didn't go away. I didn't go astray. I didn't deviate from your Torah. No matter how many Germans laughed at me, I stayed so close to your Torah. Not one bit. So this is uh, this is how the Nigun really uh, originally was written, was composed. <laughs>
Papa was at three in the morning.
I remember coming here for the first time. With man. Oh, yeah. A yeah. long time ago. Like 20, 20 years ago. The first time. But um, you see all the videos and pictures and... and I always think about what it, was, what it must have been like to be a... To just if you could like, catch time and space and stand by there. Friday night when a, when a major chord begins, right? He, he always used to say like when Friday night, when he starts the any nusach in major, so he says he felt fire, he felt mouthless, didn't matter what it was. I have this memory over here for many years on Friday night, one of the, one of the greatest of the greats that, that used to live here, all of a show passed away, Michal, Michal Gaum of Hashem, used to always during Mizmo de David, he used to grab me over here, dance three steps back, three steps forward into the Aram Kodesh. And he said that that's the moment that you could really feel Rav Shlomo more. That's what he said. Do you remember, do you remember that when we were living in L.A. and we were listening to Ben Sian's Shabbos tape? And back then it was on these boom boxes. And one of the speakers wasn't working. Only one side was working. So we only got Ben Sian's bass harmony on Mizmor the David. Do you remember? Let's, I mean, let's sing it. I remember it. Just put out a new album with a, a bunch of beautiful Reb Shlomo Niglanim. Let's sing one of them from that new album. Mashta mm-hmm. Malgish. Yeah. 
same guitar teacher. As a Again, I'm saying the truth. You probably know more. I've listened to Rabbi Shlomo speak more tired than probably anybody. I mean, maybe in the world. It's possible. Probably. The question is like this Have you ever heard Rabbi Shlomo give chizik or eitzah, hadracha, to something similar to what we're going through right now? That we're not doing this in B'nai Ha'oma. <coughs> or in front of 2,000 people, or something like that. I mean, how long is this going to go on for? It's like, it's crazy already. The first Zoom I did, after, like a day after Purim, it's already like almost Hanukkah. Right, yeah. It's like, enough, you know? <laughs> so in the spirit of, of you know, Shlomo's your side, like, what would you say? Yeah, I'm going to get you back with a really good question soon, I'm just telling oh, you. Sorry. Um, I think two, two things, two classic things come up. One is that the fact that we're able to even communicate with everybody right now is, is because of technology. He would always say that when the 747s came out and they were able to like, bring a lot of people to Israel fast, a chunk at a time, so, and faster than like Abba making Aliyah or Mom making Aliyah, which took much longer uh, back then. She came on a 747, huh? <laughs> no, let's, go, let's stick with Abba's let's stick with Abba, okay. Uh, but the three-week boat pilgrimage from Argentina. Um, so, so, uh, transistor. So, he said that it's not that people are able to come now to Eretz Yisrael because there happens to be 747s. He said that people need to get to Yerushalayim so fast, and therefore, Hashem created 747s. So, it's not that, oh, we're able to use Zoom because this is a technology that exists now. It's that people need to stay close to each other. Or if, but on whatever level it is, and hopefully, hopefully Mikdash it, hopefully sanctify it. That's one thing about the medium through which we're connecting. But the other thing that he that I heard him say once gives me so much chizuk because I believe it's happening right now. Hoshana Rabba. One of the Hoshanas is Hoshana, Shalish Shalish Hoshana. Say it on the fourth day of of Sukkot, I think. He said, what's this Shalosh show? So what are these, Hoshana, save us these three hours. So the Rishner, who he learned from so much, and he shares the same Yorzeit month, the Rishner's Yorzeit was just a few days ago. The Rishner used to say, these Shalosh shows, these last three hours, he says, before Mashiach comes, there's going to be this like last three hours. I don't know exactly what that means in the mindset of time, but there's going to be these last Kufa, where it's going to be, the hardest thing in the world is to have emuna pshuta. It's going to be harder than anything else we ever did. And the originalist said it's going to feel like in order to survive, you have to climb a wall. And that was the last thing the originalist said before he died. Hasidim knew he was about to die, so they asked the originalist, why are you telling us this? So Rabbi Shlomo said it. The originalist told them, he's like, you have, this is the only way that you're going to hold yourselves together once I'm gone. Comes the Chidush Yerim, and the Gerebi said, he said, I think what it means is that how do people walk walls, walk on walls? One person stands against the wall, and another person stands on his shoulder, and then another person stands on his shoulder, and another person stands on his shoulder. So I feel like this is like, there's nothing left, there's no chidushim left for us to figure out. Only to lachpur to, to, to dig the wells of all the tires that tzaddikim left for us. So the mindset, like what would he say to us right now? Brother, sister, you're, you're in the Shalosh Shah. It's, it's, 
‫אין שלוש אז. ‫אישנה, שלוש אז אישנה. Long three, hours. long three hours. It's been a long three hours. I don't know how long that's, these three hours last for, but that's maybe, maybe, but I don't know. Let me ask you something. <laughs> if he was here right now and he said, Hey, brother, Eitan, send me one of your nigunim. What, what do you think I want to hear? Share me with what, what, one of your nigunim. Which nigun would you choose to, to sing for him? I'll put my guitar down and run. Right. <laughs> <laughs> me too. I would probably trick him and sing one of the, like, the unknown ones of, of his. his. <laughs> I always thought, like, I always imagined if Shlomo came into a shul or in a, in a, a concert and he, heard, he heard people going, <laughs> He'd probably be like, Psh, brother, it's a good nigga. Who's nigga is that? For sure. There are many, many nigunim like that. But, what, but let's get back to making you feel uncomfortable. So what, which one, which one uh, would you do? After you threw your guitar down and ran away, when you came back. I came back and he's still there waiting, no? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the song I wrote, the nigga that wrote on your, on your porch. Yes. I love this man.
So, one of the perks about being in Eretz Yisrael now is that I'm Are you, a, you're here now. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Yeah. Just making sure. Huh? Just making sure. <laughs> is uh, <laughs> is the fact that I have my family around? So I have my brother, and Baruch Hashem, my father is here too. So maybe Abba can come and sing a song with us while Mommy watches all of us together. Yes. Your family. Maybe it's some Halashir of him, Oh, 
I remember him in the in the lobby. I don't know why, in my head. So he comes to you, and he says, Hey, Shlomo, in about 30 years from now, you're going to write this nigga. I'm going to be proud of you. Hmm. <laughs> One that he would be proud of. Um. I feel better that you're also thinking. No, I'm okay with thinking. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs>
I would, in order to feel what you asked before about like Bitochon and, and trying to figure out what's going on, I feel like if I just um, if I just heard him sing the following song, I know I know everything would be okay, and, and, and we can, but we need like a, this is strong nasach. This is what I walk down to.
Okay, so like, what, what would you what would you ask Rip Shlomo to sing to give you everything you think you need?
so much for being with us. We haven't had this much fun yeah. in a very, very long, holy fun, in a very, very long time. L'chaim Eitan Shkoyach. Shkoyach. to everyone, to everyone that helped with this, to, to the Chevra and the Moshav who, Baruch Hashem, are starting to come back home. This place, the light of Me'or Modi'im should shine brighter than ever. And this place of Tefillah, this place of Tefillah, the, the, the what happened in this holy room should uh, continue to illuminate. And Shama should have an aliyah. Tehni Shmosa Etzurah B'Etzurah Chaim. And uh, remember, hold on to the last note. We're trying our best. We're trying our best. Shkayach, everybody. Shalom Aleichem, friends. Thank you so much for being with us. Eitan and I had a blast creating this evening. Please join us in helping make sure that we can continue to make events like these possible. We have a wonderful Hanukkah planned, as well as many other special events. So if you could help us, be blessed. Thank you so much. L'chaim, rak b'semcha.